Well, I don't, I don't know if I want to do that because you see, I, I have plans. God has the spotlight for me. God has the limelight for me. God's, God, God's promised me. What's God promised you? I tell you what He's promised you. He's promised you the ability to serve someone else in the larger picture of His plan. Joseph Lys was, was radically changed. He, he paid an enormous cost for what he did. He'd never be one of the main characters in the New Testament. The last we read of him, as a matter of fact, is when Jesus was twelve. Remember that story? Jesus was twelve. They'd gone down. They'd gone up to Jerusalem for the feast. It doesn't matter whether you were going south. When anytime you're reading the scriptures, Nazareth is north. Jerusalem is south, but Jerusalem was always considered the highest place in Israel. So whether even if you lived in the north and were going south, you went up to Jerusalem. They'd gone up to Jerusalem for a feast, had a great time, was coming back with their friends from Nazareth, and Jesus had been missing for three days and nobody knew it. So they go frantically looking going back to find Jesus and they found Him in the temple and that's the last we read about the person of Joseph. But Joseph's life didn't end there and we can read through some things in Scripture and come to understand some things through the Word about Jesus because here's what I want you to see in all this. The overwhelming majority of us are called to be Joseph's, not Mary's. In fact, the whole of New Testament teaching is that serving others is the most important thing that any of us are called to. Look at the words of Jesus. Is it not this way among you? Now, he, it just, they've been arguing every place. They've been fighting over who's going to be second banana and third monkey. That's pretty much just what's, what's been going on. And, and Jesus said, It is not this to be the way this may among you, but whoever wishes to become great among you shall be your servant. And whoever wishes to be the first among you shall be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life a ransom for many. The entire call upon us in the New Testament is to serve somebody. Well, I wish I knew what the will of God was for my life. I just don't know what the will of God is for my life. If God would just show me what the will of God is for my life, I'd just do it. Well, I'm telling you right now, the will of God for your life is that you serve somebody. Amen. Well, I want to serve God. You cannot serve God without serving other people. Well, I love God. And I don't want to serve God. Well, you can't love God unless you love what God loves, and God loves people. Amen. And anybody can say, I love God. Right. <laughs> this rolls off the lips. Sounds spiritual, too. I love God. Prove it. Prove it. In the midst of your jealousy and your anger and your bitterness and your striving for position and looking for greatness and wanting to be recognized and wanting to be valued and wanting to be validated and yet God's already valued and validated you and you just won't do what is necessary for Him to release that value and validation to you. Don't ask me to say that again. You see, not even... Jesus came without serving. It's, it's the pattern. He came serving the Father and serving us. He served the Father by serving us. The Father sent Him to serve us. Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Now, Pentecostals get all worked up and jump up and down because we apply that all to the things of the Spirit. And we're going to be, it's going to be flash and dash and power's going to be flying everywhere. And people are going to be going out in the Spirit and blind eyes are going to see and deaf ears are going to hear. And I'm going to be the star as I walk down the city and everybody's going to be looking at me. That can happen. 
But without the servant spirit, it will just be another shooting star on the horizon. Folks, listen to me. Listen, listen to me. Not even the Holy Spirit considers it to be beneath Him to be called the Helper. Whose Helper? Ours. The Holy Spirit came to help us. And then we're, we're not willing to help one another because it's beneath our lineage. Hmm. I, I, I guess they clasp my nose because it's just, just deep. Here's the second thing the Lord sent me to tell you. Don't divorce your purpose. Don't divorce, divorce your purpose. It, it may seem insignificant in your eyes and in the eyes of others, but in the eyes of God, it, it's important. Our primary purpose is to serve one another. If you can receive it, it's the highest calling God gives you and I. It's where honor's reward comes from when we serve other people. To serve another so that they may fulfill the purpose God has for them. If you can receive it, your purpose is wrapped up in somebody else's success. Half a dozen people really got that. If our purpose is serving other people, then, then our purpose is pushing them as far into their purpose as we can. Well, that means I'm always on the back side of... Yep. But I want to be the anointed one. Not realizing that the anointing always flows from the head down. And that whatever you're serving, whatever you're pushing, whatever you're choosing to be a part of that purpose, everything that's on them gets on you. Without the trouble. I'm, I'm trying, Lord, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Jesus said something that baffled me for years. He said, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. Maybe we'll see one day that sometimes the nameless and faithless support people are the most important to the Lord. When it comes out to handing awards, i got a feeling it ain't going to be like we think it's going to be. We think of all the big names of our culture today in Christendom. We think of all the big names that have, that have been in the past that people like to read and study. Do you know none of those people could have been anything unless they had a support team around them that helped them carry out what they do? I, I, when, I was, when the Lord first showed this to me last week, I, I was watching, I, some of y'all probably watch this, some of you probably don't. I was watching The Voice. And uh, I love it because... Anybody can come on and, and, and be a star. I, I believe the greatest talents are yet undiscovered. I believe the greatest ministers have never been been recognized by the body of Christ yet to, to place in the right position, but all that's changing. But anyway, Pharrell had just gotten his star on on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and they were congratulating him on that. And yeah, those of you that keep up with that kind of music, Pharrell's just a fantastic singer and producer and everything. And they were congratulating him, and the first words out of his mouth... Or that, that star, some of y'all probably saw it. It's not about me. He said, I had a team of incredible people around me. And we just kept working together. He said, that star's about everybody that's been with me through all these years. He said, because I'm just another singer. Amen. Now let me keep, bringing, let me keep breaking this down. I'm, I'm, I'm old school, you okay? You alright? I'm, I'm, I'm old school and I got a little, little age on most everybody in here. But back in the day, in my opinion, there's no greater basketball player ever walked on the court than a man named Michael Jordan. 
And there's not been a greater basketball team walked on the court than the Chicago Bulls during the years of Michael Jordan. That's just my opinion. You can disagree and you can argue LeBron or whoever you want to. I, I'm not going to get into that. But I felt so strongly about this that the day Michael Jordan retired was the last day I watched a professional basketball game. In its entirety, I haven't, haven't watched one since. Why? Because when you've seen the best. <laughs> but here's what I want you to understand. There would have never been a Michael Jordan had it not been for a Scottie Pippen. That's right. And some of y'all are going, who's Scottie Pippen? <laughs> That's my point. Scottie Pippen was probably as good as Michael Jordan. But Jordan was the star. And Pippen understood his role. So when they double teamed him, it was up to Pippen to make sure he scored or did something profitable so that they could not double team Jordan and they had to stay on him. Let me break this on down a little bit farther for you. <laughs> Most everybody in here, women, whether, whether you like it or not, you, you know these names. Everybody in here probably has heard the name of Drew Brees, Manning. Brady. What's the dude's name for Green Bay? Rogers. Rogers. <laughs> These are the elite quarterbacks in the NFL. I probably some of the best that's ever played in the game. Everybody holds him up. They get all the accolades. How many of you can name? Now some of you probably can, so just. Bear with me. But how many of you can can name the five front offensive linemen that play for each one of those five quarterbacks, four or five quarterbacks? Hmm? But we all know Brady. We all know Breeze. We all know... Can I tell you that if it weren't for the front line they'd be on their hind ends in 1.5 seconds every time the ball was snapped. What I'm trying to tell you is that success only comes when all the team is fulfilling their purpose. And my favorite quarterback of all time was Dan Marino. And Moreno did this all throughout the year. He understood the importance of his front line. So he took them out and fed them steaks, bought them gloves, got them big Christmas presents every year. Why? Because he knew without his front line, he couldn't complete a pass. Are Joseph without rewards? Absolutely not. They're, they're full of... Joseph got to live a quiet life. <laughs> oh, God, to live a quiet life. He did. He lived a quiet life. He, he just took care of Mary and Joseph and they had some more kids and, and he lived life. Joseph had the privilege of raising Jesus, the Son of God. And he did such a good job, the Scripture says, that the Scripture says about Jesus that Jesus grew in favor and in stature, in, 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 in stature and in favor with God and man. How, how do you think that happened? I'll show you what happened. Joseph was the primary influence on Jesus as his earthly father until the Father in heaven rent the heavens and declared, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well placed. Now if you miss this, you miss everything I've spent 45 minutes trying to give you. We don't know when Joseph died. He probably died before Jesus' baptism because he's not mentioned, but we don't know that before. But understand this. Up until Jesus...